today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Vissel's 15.6 inch portable monitor with touchscreen display. We'll go ahead and unbox it and share my opinions right after this. Alright, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we get in the package. Slip cover there. Nice hard cardboard shell. All right. Inside we've got the monitor itself. Nice carbon fiber style protective cover on it. Looks really nice and sleek. Get our tray out of there. So we've got some more stuff, right? Yeah, so instruction manual. Gotta, gotta have that. Microfiber cloth to wipe everything down. Make sure your smudgy little fingerprints don't get shown all over the screen since it is a touch screen. Then we have a USB-A to USB-C cable connection. A USB-C to USB-C cable connection. And then a full-size HDMI to the smaller, I believe it is the, the mini HDMI connection. So, got that. And that's all we got. So, And I will say, I'm a really big fan of this carbon fiber little folding protective case. Not only does it stay on there really well with the magnetic grip on it, it actually very easily sets up. Bada bing, bada boom. You just literally fold it off and you're good to go. Other monitors I've reviewed from say uh, Aozai had a much more complex and complicated folding protective cover that wasn't as easy to set up. I mean, you had to do a lot of adjustments, things like this, but literally you just flick it over the top, bend it over the back and you're good. A little more adjustability, you can fold it, it gets some lower, deeper angles and it works quite well. As far as the monitor quality itself, um, well, just comparing it to the Aozai monitor, uh, it's pretty much identical in every single way. In fact, if you hold them side by side, you'd be hard pressed to find any differences whatsoever aside from the Aozai branding. So overall, I was very impressed with the Aozai one and thus I am also equally impressed with the quality of this monitor. Speakers, very good, very tiny speakers, but they do the job, the internal speakers and the sound quality when you're streaming video or playing games off this. The built-in controls, they allows you to adjust the things like brightness, contrast, all sorts of great picture settings even has free sync option which is really impressive for something at this price point to the price point 199 dollars is the msrp so a little bit higher than a lot of the other 15.6 portable monitors out there but that is because of the touchscreen display now let's talk about the touchscreen display because well honestly that's the only reason i wanted to check this out and i was really kind of disappointed in some areas because a fault of my own, not really a fault of the company, is I misinterpreted what this was going to be able to work with and coincide with in terms of touchscreen playability. So I got this for the expectations of being able to hook it up to my Nintendo Switch and have a touchscreen monitor and you know utilize that Nintendo Switch touchscreen functionality on a portable monitor. Unfortunately, while this does support Nintendo Switch gameplay, it does not support touchscreen capabilities on this. And to be perfectly honest, I'm probably not the best candidate to tell you about the touchscreen capabilities because this primarily is only used for touchscreen purposes with Android devices, and I personally am primarily an Apple user. I did, however, test it over on my computer, my PC, my laptops, and everything that are Windows-based, and I did get the touchscreen capabilities to work. However, there were some quirks, so let me fast forward over to that and show you about those quirks. So the touchscreen aspect of this device works rather interesting because, well, it doesn't work the way I honestly expected it to. I thought I was going to be able to control things on the main screen here while I was able to focus on other things on my secondary screen. Well, I've got my primary screen here, I've got Microsoft Paint up just as a crude example, and then I've got IGN for some gaming news to showcase some multitasking capabilities. However, let's say I want to draw, here we go, I'm drawing with my mouse on the main screen on Microsoft Paint, that's great. Let's say I wanted to scroll up and down on IGN over here. Well, I can't do that because it still controls the touch screen over on the primary screen. So as I try to scroll on the secondary screen, it is still 
doing touchscreen capabilities on that primary screen. I've not been able to figure out a way to go back and forth. So the touchscreen does work, but it feels like it's only fixed on this primary display. So if I move my gaming news over to the primary display, and I try to utilize the touch screen. You can see I can scroll up and down and go through the news. I can double click on an article. Works great. However, if you want to manipulate things on a secondary screen, like over here, while you had something else going on, well, then this is definitely not going to be the device for you. So overall, I gotta say, I'm actually quite impressed with the display. However, the touchscreen capabilities is where it leaves me wanting and desiring a little more integration and compatibility with other devices. Again, me being a primarily Apple user, I didn't really get to use this the way I wanted to because it just works as a secondary monitor, but I don't get to really experience that touchscreen display. And even when I was over on a Windows-based PC, the touchscreen, while it did work, it didn't work the way I hopefully anticipated it would, nor did it work the way I wished and hoped it would. I mean, honestly, I was hoping I was gonna be able to do multitasking and do some touchscreen and maybe, you know, manipulate Photoshop on this thing. Wasn't the case. Um, Again, really not a fault of the manufacturer because they do state clearly what this does work with. I was just really, really, really hoping that this device, fingers crossed, did a little more than what it did. One thing to note, and the same thing I noted in my Owl's Eye review, is that this type of monitor does suffer a little bit at viewing angles. So once you really start getting towards the sides, you're gonna get a bit of a washed out image. But overall, front and center, you're gonna get a fantastic image that is very clear, very sharp, and is very, very good looking to the eye. Overall, it is a great little 1080p portable monitor. If you're an Android and Samsung user and you got one of the latest phones, well then you're probably gonna have a much better experience with the touchscreen capabilities on this device than I, being a Apple user, did. So if you're looking for a touchscreen monitor and you're primarily going to be an Android type of person, well then this is definitely what you're looking for. However, if you're looking to save a little extra coin and you don't necessarily need those touchscreen functions, well then you're better off going a different route and probably getting a different monitor all the Together. Either way, I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and as always, thanks for watching, guys. It really means a lot.